Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. Her name is Claire Capagna, and she is a self-discovery coach, and today we're going to talk about self crisis, uh, identity crisis, actually, and talking about uh, empty nester syndrome and going through the process of, you know, trying to figure out who you are as a person. So I'm not going to uh, talk anymore. I'm going to give the stage to Claire and Claire is going to tell you a little about herself and what she does. And, you know, take, you know, Claire, do your stuff. What, you know, tell everybody about who you are and what you do. Well, thank you. I am really excited to be here. I can personally strongly relate to a identity crisis, <laughs> like you mentioned. <laughs> uh, I always say that my my quarter life crisis is what led me to where I'm at right now uh, as a self discovery coach because basically I had this kind of reckoning moment in my life where the very short summary is I had achieved all of these things that I had been working towards for years. Yeah. I had the exact job that I wanted. I had the income that I wanted. I was with a long-term partner who I was about to get married to at the time. And we, we are married still now, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> I had supportive friends and family around me, like all of these beautiful things. And I had this realization that I kind of was living this life that was this perfect vision of what somebody else might want, but it yeah. wasn't necessarily what I wanted. Right. And that obviously brought up a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, a lot of confusion. Like, who even am I? What do I even care about? If I've already reached exactly what I was working towards and I'm still not feeling fulfilled and I'm still not feeling the happiness that yeah. I was expecting to feel. Um, and it led me deep down the rabbit hole of self-discovery in a million different directions. And human design and astrology were the two that just supported me personally the most in my journey to like really truly understand who I am at an energetic level and and what I actually care about, what I value, what matters most to me at the core. Mm -hmm. uh, and since then, I've really just been taking steps to bring bring my life into alignment with those things that I do value, not just on you know the high overarching level, but on that daily basis because that yeah. was that's the biggest thing I see with myself, my previous version of myself and with my clients is just yeah. getting stuck in that, kind of autopilot of your day-to-day -day life and not realizing how much you actually probably aren't fulfilled in right. a lot of ways. Exactly. Now, how did you take um, human discovery and astrology and com and combine it in into your life? And, and how did it help you? Like, how did, you know, what did you have to do to like really, you know, figure out who you were as a person? Like, you know, how did it lead you to helping you cure yourself when it, when it came to not feeling fulfilled? Yeah. Oh man. I mean, I think it's worth noting that I came from a really technical background. The, the role that I was in, the career path that I was on was basically just working with engineers all day, every day. Yeah. And, um, very much using the logical side of my mind, the rational side of my brain. Yeah. And I had kind of completely tamped down this other huge part of my personality, right? which is, I mean, just for anybody listening, if you are into astrology, like I have a ton of Pisces placements in my chart and it's just the dreamer, the artist, the creative, yeah. the, the one who really just kind of thinks of things without boundaries involved. Mm -hmm. And I'm over here using all this Aquarius energy in my chart and I'm thinking very rationally and very strategically and using that all the time. And I think yeah. that's the biggest thing that spoke to me initially, I'll say that just made me feel seen when I read my chart for the first time and, yeah. and started to go deeper into it was just seeing this whole part of myself that I instantly recognized. Yeah. And, and reading this information and having my chart read by somebody at the time as well, just it, it basically articulated this whole part of myself that I had never been able to put words to before. And right. it was so validating and it kind of just offered me this permission slip as a grown adult yeah. that I hadn't pulled out since I was a child. Right. Of, there's this whole other part of you that you've been really neglecting and pretending doesn't exist. And that's actually probably part of the reason that you don't feel fulfilled because you're only checking one box of what you're identifying with right now. Right. And there's a million other facets of your personality. 
And that kind of opened the Pandora's box of me then going further and further and, and getting more nuanced information yeah. of how I can really start to honor those parts of myself. So how did you, you know, when, when you figured it out, cause I'm a Pisces too. So I, you know, <laughs> you know, how did you like, you know, realize that you were just ch really checking one box and you had so many other boxes to, you know, to explore, you know, once you, once you, was it the astrology doing your astrology and what exactly did you do, you know, to actually come to the conclusions you came to? Yeah. It, astrology, I would say was the first step in the door. Human design came second for mm -hmm. me. Um, and to me, this is my own experience with it, but I feel like astrology and understanding your birth chart is one of the best ways to dip into self-discovery. If you're open to that, yeah. it really is such an incredible tool to just help you understand the range of your personality and how it wants to manifest itself right. where human design I do think is a good compliment and maybe secondary step to yeah. it because this is more a tool that I believe can be used for self-mastery. Like human design has much more tangible, practical application, yeah. but first you need the basis of understanding who you even are. So I'll say for me, just using that example that I kind of touched on earlier of my Aquarius and my Pisces energy, yeah. I have so much of both of those in my chart. Yeah. And then I'm a Taurus rising to top it all off. Oh, wow. So I don't want to get too deep in the rabbit hole, right? <laughs> but for anybody that doesn't know what this means, you know, Aquarius and Taurus are, there's a lot of uh, friction between the two of those. Aquarius just wants to be like the weirdo, let your freak flag fly, you know, <laughs> fully own your eccentricities. Um, and Taurus is like, what are you doing? We need to be fitting into the crowd. We need to seem stable and grounded. We don't need people to think that we are losing our marbles here. Yeah. Um, and that's how I present myself. I present myself through that lens of Taurus, a very, very grounded, very stable energy. And then meanwhile, there's this whole other part of me that's yeah. just wanting to rebel and mm -hmm. wanting to do things differently. And so I think that right there just spoke to me quite a bit because yeah. it was like, I knew it. I knew I had these energies within me. And then the Pisces piece is just my sweet, sensitive, compassionate side. Yeah, and yeah. I had been so deeply leaning into my Aquarius energy of just being kind of a know-it-all and being the, the most technical person in the room and being the one that can solve the problems and all of these things. And having this reminder that I am able to cry. I'm not completely numb and dissociated and detached yeah. like the Aquarius side. Yes, I have tendencies and the ability to do that, yeah. but I'm also so strongly feeling. Right. Pisces is probably the most feeling of all the signs and Aquarius is probably the least feeling of all the signs. Right. If we're going to make really large general statements here. And so I think just having that window into my energy was back to like what I was saying with just that so validating. It was so validating to be like, I knew I had both of these in me and I've only been leaning into the numbing side, the dissociating side. Yeah, yeah. And for a many reasons, that's obviously not healthy or sustainable long-term, but it was, it was the recognition that like, Oh, probably part of the reason that I've done that is because I feel so, so deeply because my moon is my Pisces placement. So it's right. like, I truly feel so deeply. I can cry at the drop of a hat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how Pisces are. Yes. Yes. When, when you feel like you're going through identity, like when you felt like you were going through identity crisis, like for people who are listening that are going through it, what are some steps and some things you could tell them to help them figure out who they are as a person, because, you know, a lot of times when, you know, you, you go down a, a certain road and then you, you're not feeling that fulfilled feeling. And, you know, you thought your whole life that this was the way, or you were just listening to people tell you that this is what you should do, you know, cause that happens a lot too. And, you know, you go down this road either to please others or because you think it's the right decision at the time, but then you changed as a person and you feel like, this isn't, this isn't doing it for me. You know, 
and you, but you don't know what's next, you know, who am I, you know, and, you know, and you're trying to figure out what that purpose is, what that passion in your life is. And that's a very hard thing to do. Some people don't figure it out till later in life. So for you and all the clients that you've coached, what are some ways people could figure out who they are, what their passion is, what their purpose in life is? Yeah, I think this is so prevalent right now too. We were talking a little before we yeah. pressed record on this just over the past several years with, with lockdown and the pandemic and everything. A lot of us, when we kind of pumped the brakes a little bit on our lives, mm -hmm. to your point, a lot of those identities that we had been wearing, you know, yeah. as we moved through the world, we didn't have to wear them. Right. Because we weren't operating the same way that we had been. Yeah. For so long. And I think that's part of what's calling this into question for a lot of people. And for me, that is why I really like astrology specifically because it gives you a base. It yes. gives you a strong base of mm -hmm. the way that your personality can manifest on a positive end of the spectrum, as well as on a more challenging end of the spectrum, which I yeah. think is really important. There's both ends there. Um, but something that I find just invaluable, regardless of if you're open to these systems or not, is understanding what you care about, yeah. like really doing whatever version of a core values exercise resonates with you. Mm -hmm. That to me is probably the single most beneficial thing that you can do to start your self-discovery journey because most people think they know what matters to them mm -hmm. until they go through an exercise like this. Yeah. And every single client I've ever worked with, and I mean myself included, every single one of them has come back to me and said, that was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Right. What what type of exercise is it? Can you could explain a little bit and dive into it, you know what it's really about and like how do you go about doing it? For sure. So I personally really love Brene Brown's core values exercise. I, mm -hmm. I mean, you could literally just Google that and find it. Um, there's yeah. a, a list that she has online that's a free PDF. Right. But there's a, a million other ones out there. All of them are going to really come back to identifying the, the things that matter most to you in life. And when I yeah. say things, I mean the feeling, basically, yeah. the energy that you want to experience on a daily basis. I'm not talking about material things. Like a lot of people, their brains immediately go to, you know, financial security or something as yeah. being one of their core values. And I'm like, is that really one of your core values? Yeah. Is that, a, you know, is that actually an additional layer on top of the fact that you, you highly, highly value, um, being able to be vulnerable vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that when you're not secure, right? Or secure, whatever it may be. Um, or it's freedom. Like I think for me, me, freedom and most of my clients, I would say freedom is one of the number one core values that we see identified. And really yeah. that's what's actually beneath financial security. It's like financial security is a byproduct of that. Yes. Um, freedom to me is like, you know, in all capacities, energetic freedom, time freedom, financial freedom, yeah. the ability to do what I want when I want. Yeah. That's the thing I actually care about. Yeah. I don't really care about having a certain amount of money. Right. As long as I'm afforded the freedom to live my life the way I want to. Exactly. And that's kind of the, the mindset and the process that we approach this with. It's like, we really want to dig deeper than yeah. these surface level things. We want to figure out what's at the core of them and really keep it as narrow as possible as well. I think, you know, if, if you look at that list, if you Google this exercise, you're going to see, you know, 50 different words and yeah. you're probably like, I care about all of these. Right. Yes. And we're looking at the things that you kind of want to filter your decisions through. I would say yes. that's the biggest thing for me. Like if I'm going to take a job, if I'm going to uh, say yes to a business partnership, fill in the blank, you yeah. know, start a new relationship. Is it going to bring me more freedom or is right. it going to take away my freedom? Right. And if it's going to take it away, then I need to have a really good reason as to why I want to do it. Exactly. And that's a great way to look at it because a lot of people, they keep taking on things because they consistently, you know, like a lot of people get, you know, they start to grow and they get so obsessed with financials or they're in a financial rut because COVID put them in that financial rut. So they're, they become obsessed with making money and, you know, their intentions may be good, but it becomes that 
focus, you know, and then they lose, they lose track of who they are as a, a person because they're so obsessed with other outside materialistic things. And I think a lot of people get caught up in the outside world and they forget who they really are and how they came into this world, you know, what personality, you know, they were, you know, and yes, we do change every seven years, they say, and we become different people, but have you seen, you know, people come to you and, and they don't really know who they are. They've kind of lost themselves. They just don't, they don't know who they are, who they stand for, what their purpose is, you know, you know, uh, you know, they might not even realize what, you know, really makes them happy anymore because they're just, they just feel, they just don't have no clue who the real, let's say Jane Smith is, you know, they just don't know who that person is. So the first step you're saying is to, to figure out your core values. And that would be number one. So after you figure out your core values, what would be the second step that someone's going through identity crisis? What would they do after that? Yeah, I think that's the, the biggest step right there is starting there. And then from there, what I always have my clients do, what I did personally was I took a really honest in inventory of my life yeah, and figuring out what is in alignment with those values currently and what's not yes. in alignment with it. that's like, I think alignment has become such a popular buzzword. And at the end of the day, it's like, what does that even mean? Yeah. This is what it means. It means aligning with something. What are you aligned with on yeah. a daily basis in your behaviors and your words and in every, your thoughts in everything that you're doing yeah. Does it actually align with the things that matter most to you or that you're saying matter most to you Yeah. or not? And I think this is always a really eye-opening exercise too with my clients of, well, I thought I was really living in alignment here. And I look at this list and I realize there's actually a lot of things that I can, you know, kind of refine or potentially just shift the way that I'm approaching them. Yeah. And this is where we realize such micro changes can have yeah. a massive impact because usually it's not like an entire thing is yeah. out of alignment, for example, but parts of it might be, you know, an entire right. relationship might not be misaligned, but the way that I'm showing up when X, Y, and Z happens might need some addressing. Right. Right. So, you know, when you work on those, those issues, you know, is this is something you consistently work on each day. You work, you work on yourself each day. Now, are they, are there specific things that you like your clients to do that they could do at home to help them really figure out who they are, then go, then kind of fall into their shoes and become that person? Because I'm sure once they figure out who they are and they start addressing it and they start making goals to actually become that person, like it, it, it I would think it, it's just a, a game changer that, that, that their self-esteem, their, their views on life, their, their expectations, their, you know, their, the road they want to take is probably going to be, it's, it's just going to, you know, so many changes. I, I look at, when I th say that, I feel like a tornado comes into my head, you know, it's just good. All these things are going to start to happen to this person. Yep. And I, I love that you make the connection of a tornado because that was something that, kept me in this state of, you know, paralysis by analysis yeah. <laughs> for so long because I didn't want to blow my whole life up. Yeah. There were parts of it that I really liked at the core of it. It was still good, but it was like these massive components needed to change or I was never going to feel the level of, you know, fulfillment and purpose that I wanted in my life. And I, that's yeah. what most of my clients are experiencing. So it's like, I think a couple things come to mind with that. Um, number one, once you do identify your core values, keeping them somewhere where you're going to see them every day is so, so helpful Yeah. until they do become deeply ingrained in the way that you're living your life. You're like, you're embodying them. You're not just aware of them. Yeah. There's a big difference there. Yeah. Um, and I still have mine, you know, like I still mm -hmm. keep them up. It's not something that necessarily you have to get rid of even once you start doing it. Yeah. Uh, I also think to your point of evolving, thing. I do it every birthday. I just do another check and make sure that the ones that I identified last year are still jiving with me. I think that yeah. can be really helpful. They might not change, but they also might. And allowing them to is really important. Right. Um, and then the other two things that are coming up or a couple of things are like presence. As you become hyper aware of these things, yeah, 
it's about cultivating that intentionality in the way yeah. that you're living your life. You know, you can be aware of something and still not do anything about it. Right. So it's, exactly. it's really about becoming more present, becoming more aware, which obviously I, I can share exercises on with my clients when we do that. Um, it's going to be different for everybody. What's going to help them with that. Yeah. But that's a big piece of it because that's, what's going to actually trigger a different reaction in yeah. those moments when they've been behaving one way and they want to be behaving a different way. Yeah. You have to be present in order to recognize live in the moment. Yes. When you have the opportunity to do that. Um, so that's a big piece of it as well. And the other one escaped me. So we're just going to leave it at that and hope that that was. <laughs> no, that's perfect. You know, I think it's, you know, once, once you start to really like look at your core values and you start to really realize who you are as a person, and then you start doing those exercises that you mentioned and you start to really look at yourself and look at, you know, you, you know, you look into astrology and then you look at, you know, who you are and what you represent. Cause when you do look into astrology, it's amazing because it's so on point, you know, people, you know, you'll have skeptics that will make fun. And then you'll have people who are very into it. And if you look into astrology and you look at the definitions of, and the characteristics of the person, and then you even look at the horoscopes when they make Make horoscopes out of the astrology it is so on point you know and it's you know so it it's really it all ties in all the spirituality like even numerology and you add all these different things and you look at it and you if you start to do it you'll see that it all ties in and it really it will define you who you are as a person and you're like and you start to read it and you're like wow that is so on point. And then you start to see other stuff and like, wow, you know what? I didn't, you know, I know I have those qualities or maybe I, I didn't realize that I could actually, you know, my characteristics as a person could actually go in that direction. So I can combine that into my life and maybe create X, Y, and Z. And then the, the ball start rolling and then you could actually, you know, find out, you know, who you are as a whole. Because as you do astrology, you figured out maybe three fourths of it, but then that quarter, you know, come, you know, you see other stuff and you're like, wow, you know what? I, you know, that really resonates with me. I like that, you know, and then you, once you put it into, into your, into your daily, you know, lifestyle, then you kind of see that it all falls together, like you were saying, and that you could actually, then you start to that, that snowball effect, like it happened to you, it starts to happen. And I, I would say that someone is going to feel very confident and very good about themselves once they apply that and start to really, you know, even just knowing, because sometimes it's right in front of us and we don't even realize the answers are right in front of us. And we have to just take time out to really, you know, do a little bit of the work and the research to figure out you know, and, but they're right. The answers are right in front of us all the time. It's just taking that time out to, to really do the research and understand it and then apply it. I think, what do you think? I totally agree. I think that that's the biggest piece. And I think for me, for my clients, this is something that I probably would have never gone down the rabbit hole of, you yeah. know, if I hadn't had that identity crisis moment, mm -hmm. um, and I'm so grateful that I did because of that, because to your point, it's allowed me to feel so much more empowered, so much more like I'm actually, you know, activating my true potential, not just checking the box of yeah. really good at whatever task that you hand me. I'm right. actually doing where my, you know, the things that my energy wants to be doing is where I'm pouring it now. Yeah. And it feels so much more fulfilling and purposeful. And you can feel that when you, you know, exchange energy with another person, yeah. you can feel that two way exchange happening. Oh, it's sure. so much different than when I was, you know, quote unquote successful. Yeah. My corporate job where I was really good at what I was doing, but it wasn't necessarily something that I was personally finding fulfillment and joy in. Yes. This is something where I... I can feel that the other person is benefiting, which was happening previously in my yeah. job, but I'm benefiting as well. It's this right. like beautiful mutual benefit type of situation. And that just, I think to your point of just all these shifts that you're making, it changes the way that you 
even move through the world yeah. on a daily basis. Just making these minor shifts, it, it has such a massive impact on how your whole perspective changes. Right. Completely. It really does. Now we talked also, cause we were talking about identity crisis. We had mentioned previously, we started to talk about uh, before the show about empty nester syndrome, because that's another form of identity crisis, because you could go on for years thinking that I'm a mother, I work in this profession and this is my title. I'm a, I'm a wife, you know, or I'm this, you know, and, and you can name all these things that you are. And then all of a sudden the kids are grown you know, they're independent, the house starts to get quiet, you know, and you find that, you know, all those titles that meant so much, you know, you're still a mom, but you're really, the kids aren't there. They don't need your services anymore. And then you're just like in this whole different realm of life. And you're like, okay, what's next? Who am I? You know, what's going to be my, what's my purpose? You know, what is the next 20 years going to look like or 30 or 40 years going to look like, you know, what a, what is really going to fulfill me? Because you don't want to just sit there once the kids are grown and once life has changed for you, you know, you, you, you want to feel, I, I feel like, you know, most people like a feeling of accomplishment or just want to know who they are, you know, and, you know, what's your intake about empty nester syndrome? Cause you said a lot of your clients, you know, come to you with that. For sure. I would say like half of my clients probably have been in that, uh, that, period of their lives where they are having that massive shift to your point of they've for decades been identifying so strongly as the roles that they've been playing as mom, um, as caretaker, as fill in the blank, you know, and that happens a lot with in, in a million different ways. You know, this happens when people lose a job that they've been yes. at for a long time mm -hmm. or leave a job. Like there's a lot of different ways this can show up, but with empty nesters with the job situation, with all of them, it all comes back to you've been so, so strongly potentially over identifying yeah. with these roles that you've been playing. And that served you potentially, probably I would say yeah, for many years, but now you're feeling the confusion of who you even are at right. this stage in your life. Because I think what happens from the empty nester perspective specifically is even if you go back to a version of yourself that maybe did know who they were yeah. or did feel so strongly about certain things, the chances are you're probably a completely different version of yourself than that person yeah. prior to having children. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, you've learned so much, you've grown so much. And I think this is where it can be so, so valuable because what happens in this situation is you do have this newborn freedom, you know, yeah. and you can choose to actually leverage that, or you can choose to wallow, yeah. right. <laughs> really, really grieve, which I think is still important, grieving this former identity and grieving this stage of your life. Yeah. But you don't need to sit in that forever. Exactly. And wish that you were there because back to your earlier point, we all change, life changes, our circumstances change, and we can either roll with that or we can sit in that and, and kind of keep ourselves stuck. Yeah. which we all know doesn't feel good. So right. yeah, it's like, let's take advantage of this newfound freedom. Let's not uh, completely abandon the fact that you are still a mother or yeah. a mother or whatever it may be, but it's right. like, let's actually enjoy our daily lives now that we have so much more freedom with where we're placing our energy because exactly. previously it was dedicated to something specific and now you, you have much more choice over where yes. it's going to go. Exactly. I like that a lot because I think people start to look at the negative aspects of it and that's what gets them so depressed and that's what makes them start to grieve. But if you look at the positive aspects, I think then, like you said, you have more freedom. Now you could start to take mm -hmm. that time and do the things that maybe you didn't have time before because you were so busy doing X, Y, and Z as maybe a parent or a caretaker, you know, or a wife or whatever the case may be, or a partner. So, but now you have that time. And, you know, so you get, get to maybe accomplish the things you never got to accomplish that can bring you so much fulfillment and joy. What do you think? I think that is why we're here <laughs> like, <laughs> in this day and age specifically where most of us do have the freedom to do that. Yeah. Degree. Um, 
And I think one of the biggest things that I feel like comes up with empty nesters specifically, the, the clients I've worked with at least, is recognizing that your life's not over. Yeah. Completely still have, you have as much time as you believe that you do. And right. at the end of the day, you know, anything can happen to anybody. So right. it's like, would you rather just sit here and do nothing? Even yeah. If you had one year left to live. What if you had 20 years left to live? Wouldn't you exactly. rather- live those doing what you want to be doing instead of being depressed that the best years of your life are over, or I wish I did X, Y, and D sooner, yeah. X, y, and D sooner or whatever it may be. It's like, you can literally start doing that now if you yeah. want. Um, and I just feel like I've had so many clients be perfect examples of that, where they just, they talk back to what we were earlier saying, they feel empowered. Yeah. To just do what they've always wanted to do. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now tell us about some of the services that you offer your clients. Yeah. So I, I do still do birth chart and human design readings, which are just one-off readings where I can go deep into your charts with you. Um, and you will get like a, you know, a little Google doc to reference for yeah. you. Also a, a zoom call where we'll go deeper. Yeah. Into it. And then with one-on-one -on -one clients, I work with them over either a four month period or an eight month period. You get to choose how you kind of want to space the calls, but yes. essentially they're much deeper dives. It's right. just in a birth chart reading or a human design reading, you, you kind of still have to stay at the high level even because yeah. the amount of time, you know, and we can just keep peeling back layer by layer when we work together yeah. for that longer period of time. And that's where some of the real life-changing transformations happen, mm -hmm. I'll say. Yeah. Where you can see these massive shifts in people's lives happen where it's like before X, Y, and Z and after X, Y, and exactly. Z. Moments. Exactly. Um, and so that's the one-on-one. -on -one. And then something that I'm really loving doing right now is collaborating with other business owners. So, mm -hmm. you know, therapists, coaches, um, anybody who has some sort of service-based offering with their clients where I'm offering birth chart readings, the human design coaching, all of this stuff as a compliment to their yeah. work. So I that's like been really that. fun to just allow them to basically understand their clients better in right. that way, allow their clients to understand themselves better as well. Exactly. Um, and it just helps, you know, so many different types of industries to go way deeper than they could have without that information. I love it. Now, where can people find you? What's your website address? Yes. So it's Claire Campagna dot com just my name do i need to spell that or is it going to be linked in there <laughs> we'll put a link we'll put a thank link thank you i don't know like, <laughs> busy and i wouldn't know how to spell that so, so clairecompania.com is where you can find um just more information about that and also where my um planets and signs free download is as well so definitely check that out if you're tired of googling the definitions of each of the planets and the signs mm -hmm. Um, if you do get a chart reading as well, you get the version that has the houses included. And that also gives access to my email list, which is where I do a uh, full moon and new moon information based on mm -hmm. each rising sign. So that's always fun. And my Instagram is probably the other place that I would say I'm like most active and, and definitely feel free to chat with me there. And that's just Claire.Campania. I love it. Now, if you had to take a couple of good takeaways that you wanted to emphasize from our conversation, what would you like to tell the listeners, you know, from what we talked about today, some main points? Yeah, I think whether you're into doing exercises or not, you know, diving into a new yeah. modality or not, the biggest things that I would take away are learning what matters most to you. Like mm -hmm. that to me is the biggest thing, whether you do the official core values exercise or not, figuring out and identifying what actually matters to you, narrowing that down to just one, two or three things. Yeah. Really, um, and starting to just pay attention as you yeah. move through your day, maybe start with one day. Right. Maybe start with one activity, maybe start with one week, you know, keep yeah. adding on from there, but I think it's going to be a really eye-opening opportunity for you if you do that and yeah. allowing it to lead you down whatever self-discovery path that takes you from there. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. I just want to thank you, Claire, for coming on the show. You know, this has been um, a, a great time. I really like your approach of how you really, you know, figure out 
who you are as a person. When you're going through identity crisis, it could be very stressful. It could be very, um, you know, for some people, very depressing because, you know, they've gone through life and and they, you know, get into points where they just don't know who they are as a person or they feel unfulfilled. They don't want to get out of bed. You know, they're just missing things in life. And there is, you know, there is there's areas of their life that just don't feel right. And, you know, it's so hard sometimes to figure out on our own. But having, you know, these tech, the, these these different strategies that you talk about and using astrology, which I love, which is so unique, you know, people could actually, you know, figure out who they are and what their purpose is in life and really, you know, figure out, you know, what areas they can pull into their lives to make them, they make them feel more fulfilled, which I think is is so important because when you go through life, you know, you don't want to go through life feeling unfulfilled, you know, the best, you know, that we, you know, the time we have on this planet, you want to be happy. You want to live life to its fullest and knowing who you are and knowing where you want to go and just being very confident in your own shoes is so important. So I, I really give you kudos for what you do because you really make a huge impact on other people's lives because it really is so important that people understand who they are as a person because sometimes they think, like you said earlier, they think they know who they are. But really, they're not that person. You know, some of these people have been told that they're these persons, you know, and they believe it, you know, because other people have been telling them, but they've never taken the time out to really, really look deep inside themselves. And and they they feel that depression or that uncertainty in, you know, deep down inside. They just don't talk about it very much because of the shame and guilt that you mentioned. And I've known many people that have felt like that but they don't really know who they are, you know, or they're afraid to, to explore, or they don't know how to explore. So what you're teach them is really great. And I, I just like to give you kudos and, and thank you for the work that you do. Thank you so much. <laughs> Truly. That was really amazing to hear. And yeah, I was one of those people. So that's why I do this work. And yeah, to your point, the amount of fulfillment is just wild comparatively yeah. <laughs> when I look at what I was doing. So I think we all go through identity crises in our life at different points in our life. I feel like when you're young and you're a teen, you're trying to figure out who you are. And as you get older, you think you know who you are, but then things change and you're not the same person anymore. And I think as we go through different periods and different decades in our lives after so many years, I think we start to change and we start to understand ourselves better and we become, we learn from life. So we become more established in, in our thoughts and in our behaviors. And I think as time goes on, we need to really check and, and really, you know, think about who we are. Are we happy with who we are at this moment? Or is it time to take the next step in life and go in a different direction and do, you know, because we, the, the, the most important thing in life is that we're always happy, you know, and, and that's the, the main thing is being happy, being healthy and living a productive life that you could w wake up in the morning, look in the mirror and like what you see. Yep. I think being satisfied at the end of the day is one of the most underrated things out yeah. there. Oh, like, yeah. You, I, I had the multiple six figure salary. I was mm -hmm. depressed every single day when I came home. So, yeah. 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 So it's, it's being really honest with yourself about right. the reality of your situation and, um, and allowing, allowing it to take you where, where it's going to lead you. I think that's a big piece too, you know, not over attaching to a specific way that life needs to look as long as I feel these things that I've identified as mattering yeah. most to me, then that's really all that matters. Yes, I, I agree 100%. And and I also, you know, like to thank you for, you know, having so much courage to, you know, you, you were living the life, you know, that every, you know, many people dream of ha having, but it wasn't fulfilling you and you had enough of courage to walk away from it because a lot of people are afraid of change because they don't know what's going to happen. They, and they're afraid of failure, but, you know, you took that chance and you succeeded. So, you know, thank you. You know, you're, you're a great mentor to others. Well, thank you. It was, it was quite terrifying. I will not lie. You heard I'm a Taurus rising for anybody that knows what that means. I, <laughs> big, big, big shift to me, but yeah, what I always tell people with that one is like, for me, when the discomfort of staying where I was at became greater than the fear of leaving, that was, yeah. that was my cue. And I think right. that's always a really good signal. If staying in the situation that you're in feels yeah. worse than the fear of leaving it, it's probably time that you need to shake things up a little bit. Right. A hundred percent. 
Well, Claire, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And I hope, you know, you'll be back and we can talk some more. And thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You have a great day. You as well.